keeps curtains up on a special episode of West of Broadway, a celebration of musical theater on the West Coast. I'm Will Armstrong. And I'm Wendy Rosoff, and this is our very first attempt at a Zoom video episode. <laughs> and since most of the country is practicing social distancing due to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, we've been forced to get creative. Yes, and creative we are. Like most of the world, whether you're working from home or learning remotely or just connecting with your friends and having virtual happy hours, Zoom has become an incredibly important tool. And I am thankful for Zoom because I get to see your smiling face once again. How, how are you and how are you coping with this new normal? Um, yeah, I'm so happy to see you too. I am coping <laughs> as well as can be expected. You know, I'm safe and sound and tucked in with my family and my dog and everybody's healthy um you know and i'm actually incredibly busy because as you know i'm a teaching artist and so everything has gone online for me and then although the industry has shut down casting directors have opened up their doors and said we want to do generals we want to do self tapes and so i've been more busy with industry stuff than i've been in a long time and then of course we have some other projects that you know i've been working on but it's an incredibly busy apocalypse and you? Yeah. Uh, same. I am, um, when I'm not hosting a podcast about musical theater, I am a publicist here in Los Angeles, and most of my clients are in the health and wellness space. So all of them are being asked to comment on whether, if they're doctors, they're like, please translate what the news is about this. Or I have personal trainers that talk about exercises that you can do with body weight from your yeah. home. When you yeah. down. I have um, interior designers who um, design from a uh, holistic and a healing space and how to maximize your healing space potential of your areas and stuff like that. It's pretty, and then I have like life coaches and people who can just help um, navigate like your internal stress and kind of how to put things into perspective. And, and so like all of them have been asked to speak to the different aspects of the situation that we're forced in right now. So it's, I've been really, really busy too. So I'm very grateful. And more than anything, I'm really grateful for the health and wellness of so many of my family and friends we've been able to, I mean, it's definitely touched and affected a lot of members of our community and our, and our circle of friends, which is heartbreaking. But um, like, I'm just, my mom who is a pious Catholic is like, she is adamant about going to church still. And it drives me crazy because she just like, she's like, but she, she, she has assured me that they, there's like, cause she goes, she's one of those Catholics that go every day. Like just oh, wow. Wow. every day yeah. um, because the Catholic priest does a mass every day. And if no one shows up, he still goes through it uh, every single day. And so my mom will attend that. And there are some diehard Catholics that show up every single day with her. Um, and she's like, there's usually like 10 or so. And they all practice social distancing. They don't shake hands. They don't stand too close. They sit very far apart from each other. They don't receive communion right now. And I think, you know, so, <sighs> but yeah, a lot. but I really want to just shake her and just be like, stay the hell home. <laughs> it's hard. To, she's set in her ways. So the Catholics don't do the Zoom. Um, my mom. Okay, so I got her an iPhone a while ago, and her fingers are so dead that they won't even react with the screen. And I'm dead just like, it's just, I'm just like, what? Like, I mean, I, 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 I'm like, snap! Rub your fingers. Do something. That can, it's just like she she is i got years and years and years ago i bought her a vcr so when i was traveling as a dancer i set up a vcr for her and i put my tape in um of the show i was doing when i was on tour we watched it and then i left and like i come back six months later and it's the same tape and she never even pressed play it's just a flashing clock that she dusts once a week and then i upgraded and got her a dvd and it was the same thing. And mm -hmm. then she's not tech savvy. I could talk about your mom all day long. But? <laughs> but, oh yeah, no, but there's this bigger fish to fry, you know, because although I'm so grateful to see your smiling face, yours is not the only face I get to see. Can it we talk is. about our guest? Yes, we can. Really Our good. guest today is the amazing Catherine Burns, AKA Cat Burns. Cat is a two time, and I'm reading here because she's got so much stuff, I don't want to miss anything, okay? So, Cat is a two time Emmy Award winning choreographer for her work on Crazy Ex Girlfriend, of course. She's choreographed over 150 episodes of TV, including Key and Peel, Why Women Kill, The Morning Show, and Drunk History, just to name a few. 
Some of Kat's other career highlights include directing and performing with the cast of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend live at Radio City Music Hall. She co-produced and choreographed Yes, It's Really Us Singing, the Crazy Ex-Girlfriend concert special series finale. She also choreographed and cast Pharrell Williams' Happy, the world's first 24-hour music video, which won the Grammy for Best Music Video of the Year. I was obsessed with that video. I loved it. It made me so happy. Like... (laughs) She did her job well. And yes. speaking of awards, don't forget the Webby Award winning short, The Wire, the musical she made with Funny or Die. Oh my gosh, I love Funny or Die. And Captain also choreographed Rachel Bloom for her primetime and creative arts Emmys performances and the 2019 opening number of Hollywood Week for Dancing with the Stars. She's worked with other stars like Weird Al Yankovic, Lil Dicky, Logic, our friend Carly Rae Gibson, Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas, and so many more. And now she's going to talk with us. Katherine Burns, welcome to Western Broadway. Welcome, Kat. Hey. Oh my gosh, it took me no time to get here at all. <laughs> Super excited to have you. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's quite literally good to see you guys. Oh, okay. You too. You were supposed to be one of our first guests at our first special Western Broadway live event at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood. Fun. I know. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not having a bourbon. This is coffee, but it can be a celebratory bourbon, I suppose. Please, exactly. nobody will ever know. We were totally looking forward to the event, and we were so happy that you signed on to be our special guest. And we're bummed, but we totally understand, like, with the way the world is right now, it's just, like, what we all have to do. So it's a, yeah. we look forward to eventually, when the world goes back to normal, um, We'll have, we'll have like a, a celebratory dance party afterwards. It'll be like a year from now. We'll all dress like Burning Man because that's what we'll be wearing by that point. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so how so, you, oh, yeah. Sorry. No, Will, please hit it. I was just going to say, so we're all sheltering in place. How are you getting through these, uh, our, our quarantine pandemic lockdown? Uh, yeah. Um, well, you said keep it light, but I got to... I got to sure. do the roller coaster that is this emotion. I mean, um, you know, four weeks ago, I, I was actually in New York when, when Broadway shut down the day mm-hmm. of. I was um, working on a show called The Other Two. It's a really funny show by Chris and Sarah, the old head writers of SNL. Mm-hmm. And it was this really fun comical scene with Molly Shannon. And we were dancing in Central Park. And the lyrics were like, I have a feeling that Monday is going to be fun. And it was like bouncy and happy. And it was so surreal because we had this three hour lunch when we got the news of Broadway. And and we were like, are we even shooting this scene? This feels really weird to gather with this many people. So that's when that happened. And I like changed my flight. And I was like, I'm afraid I'm going to get stuck in New York, which ideally in, an- in another situation would have been great. Um, so like, I got on a red eye and came back to LA and have been home ever since. And to be honest, in the beginning, it was actually uh, decent, you know, like it, as life of a freelancer, it kind of feels normal in the sense of like, you just don't have any work. All your friends are busy. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you chose good friends, so they're all booked. You're not. Um, and, you know, I, I luckily converted my little garage into a dance studio last year. And so that's kind of been my saving grace is I like, I don't do yoga, but I like gave myself like a, over the past year, like a yoga practice flow meditation, sound bathy thing. It's very, very Cali. Um, so I do that. And then there's been a lot of online dance classes, which have been awesome. And I kind of like don't have the balls to show up into a class because I'm like, one afraid people will see me and then see me dance and be like, how did she get <laughs> she's not all that okay her mama was mm. <laughs> um, and i mean i don't think well anyways I, I i've always been that dancer that stand in the back and watch everyone else anyways which is probably why i'm more of a choreographer than anything else like i would i would book the other people in the room before like trying to fight for the spot myself if that makes sense and totally. i like my friends tips on how to dance better like while auditioning again so, <laughs> Um, sorry I digress but no that's amazing I love that and I had a lot of friends you know when we were uh, during my time in New York we were all on Broadway there are a lot of Broadway dancers who were like I'm not going to class because I'm afraid that people are going to look at me and be like how'd she book that show you, just, <laughs> yeah. you know there are a lot of components that go into booking a show or doing what you do you know what I mean and that that's a real thing yeah 
So it's been fun to be able to do like hip hop and ballet and I did heels, I've done tap. I've like given myself like a whole scholarship, you know, Ooh. but um, I, you know, we got the news that Adam Schlesinger, a dear friend from Crazy X passed and that really hit me in the gut and that, and I was on Wednesday. So to be very honest, I've just been crying kind of nonstop. Um, he was like a, a work big brother and, and I saw him last month and he's, he, you know, obviously Crazy X was such a special, beautiful time and we worked on opposite ends of the process, but um, we made sure like in the very beginning to like get to know each other and he was just like a cool dude that you like wanted his approval and he just was super chill and so fucking talented and you know, he was on a ventilator, he had all the medicine, mm -hmm. we thought he'd be fine and then the news broke on deadline, I, I found out. Uh which was so surreal, but um, and my heart just breaks for his family. And so, you know, that kind of changed everything. Like I was going for walks or bike rides or being outside. And like, it's such an interesting switch to be that person that's like happily posting dance videos and there's dance studio to all of a sudden be grieving. And then you're like, oh, this is, this is why we're locked down. Yeah. It's not because it's time to like recreate yourself and reinvent yourself. And, and that pressure obviously should be gone if, if, if you don't want to, um, but the grief of it, and I already, it already feels like a loss. I mean, it is a loss for our, for our community and for me personally. You know, he was a he was a big champion of mine, and I, I'm at least glad that I looked back. Obviously, the first thing you do is like, was I an asshole? Did I say goodbye? Did I did I text him back? You know, but last month it was like it was good to see you. It's good to see you too. And then that that infamous, let's catch up soon. When, you know you don't know when it'll be so if anything from this I, I hope people like stay true to their word and when they say they want to catch up with someone they do and if they leave a place without saying goodbye to someone that they say hey it was good to see you sending even if it's a text you know sending you love hope you're well good to see you because it was true you know I mean we had five exclamation points so it must have been true you know <laughs> um so to be honest i i like i've been a, a, a big lump since wednesday um and so today is my first day of i think allowing myself to like kind of come back to normalcy or whatever this normalcy is thank yeah. you so much for for letting us be part of that and also for telling your story i think it's so important to share these things. Will and I were just actually talking about this before you joined us. I also lost a very dear friend who's part of the LA theater community, John Todd, this oh, week. Oh yeah, I didn't know him personally, but he was such a beautiful dancer. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, we did five shows together and is a personal friend and a gut punch is exactly right. Um, and that idea of how social media is kind of playing tricks with all of us, whether it's catastrophizing it or making light of it. And, you know, it, until it personally hits you, it takes on a very different feeling. And it's, um, it's been a trip, man. It's, it's yeah. tough. So thank you so much for taking the time today. My pleasure. It, re it really honestly is good to see y'all. And um, what a indescribable time we're going through, really. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. But it is it is so interesting as far as the we being in a, in a community full of so many creatives that have all this free time. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every, like even, like I mean, Wendy and I are content creators. We do this all the time with our podcast, and then all of a sudden we see all these people diving into it that we're just like, wait, <laughs> you know. And it's just been really really fascinating to see every everybody take advantage of this technology that maybe they haven't had an opportunity to embrace, like Zoom, for instance. Like, I mean, it's just like, I know so many people that were like, this is my first Zoom call ever. What do I do? And you're muted or, you know, and stuff. And so, um, and then also watching how some people are doing wacky, crazy stuff and some, and, and it's just, we want to, we don't want to lose what makes us human, but we also want to be respectful of this time. And it's like that, and how we just, Rains the gambit of, of of what kind of emotions that we're all feeling and going through and stuff like that, and it's just it's especially over here in Los Angeles because life is pretty great because we all have outdoor space. The weather's usually really nice. It's raining today, but um, and it's it's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's um. Oh just really hi! Wilbur wanted to say hi. Hi, hi Wilbur. Wilbur. <laughs> 
race. He's been getting so much attention from me every two seconds. It's oh, like yeah. a hug and cuddle. I'm like, I love you so much. <laughs> my best friend. With therapy cat. <laughs> yeah. I think okay. this is the first time that my dog has ever been like, okay, enough. <laughs> Thank you. Enough. I get it. I get it. You love me. Sorry, Will. Will, 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 Wilbur interrupted you, Will. So sorry, what were you saying? No, it just, as far as, um, we, we're just running the gambit of as far as emotions, like from laughter to tears. And it's just, it's, re it's such a bizarre, crazy time, like unprecedented time. But it's, um, in a lot of ways, it's bringing us all closer together and stopping yeah. us and making us aware of just how special and important we all are to each other. And yes, we're supposed to socially distance, but emotionally, we can still connect through the phone or text or Zoom or, you know, FaceTime or what have you. And, so, and like, we can't afford to stay isolated and trapped in our own little bubbles. But yeah. also, my question for you, um, being in New York and then flying right back home, what did you, how did you prepare? Like, as far as, did you do a big grocery shop? Did you order stuff? Like, what? What? Is, how's your supply situation? Like, what'd you do? Oh, I mean, I, uh, I just was shopping like I normally do, which is, I don't know, like, like I feel, yeah, but it's just like, I feel like you had like, you started like a second behind because everybody else had probably already started. Oh yeah, learning. there was no toilet paper. Exactly. <laughs> I, already, I already had some things. Um, I don't know. I'm not really a panic person. I mean, I felt, I felt the anxiety subconsciously. Like I, it was a very strange, surreal feeling. Like I, Found that I couldn't sleep at night, not because I started thinking and then it triggered anxiety. It was like the collective world anxiety was like literally like an anvil on my heart. Mm -hmm. And then I, people with anxiety with kind of crippling regular anxiety every day were like, oh yeah, that's what it's like, like all the time. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't even like think anything. It just felt wow. like almost, I couldn't breathe a little bit. But um, uh, so other, so I, I don't really go to panic mode. I'm kind of like, no use crying over spilt milk kind of person, um, which I think helps me in the business because, you know, what are you going to do? Everything changes. What yeah. are you going to do? Go with it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've only been to the grocery store a few times. There's actually, um, there's been some good delivery places. Uh, there's a place in Atwater that does like a grocery box. I mean, it's actually like so consumer friendly, like they're, they're drop off this like mm -hmm. fresh produce at your front door here in LA. And it's like, Oh, that's that's amazing and I, I think it's kind of fun to like piece together what you already have I think I don't know maybe this is too like deep to get into but maybe like in a um, spiritual way or uh, mother nature trying to put us in order some way like I, I feel like we over consume in general and obviously we've seen like the bad parts of the greed like taking more than you need and other people can't have it right and so I feel like that's very American to be so consumer heavy and and that's always stressed me out for some reason like having a lot of stuff stresses me out like I'm more zen and like it's like a, a clean empty room <laughs> no. or just things like an air like I would never go buy myself nice things but if it's like passed down from my grandma I'm like okay yeah um but I think it's beautiful to use what you have right so like I have like I've had like coke a can of coconut milk in my cabinet for literally years I think probably two years and right. it's still good I guess and then you know I found out how to make like yogurt out of it and wow. take two probiotics it's like the easiest thing two probiotics with a wooden spoon I haven't done it yet but you know <laughs> you'll have to let us know how it goes <laughs> yeah I love that I'm seeing so. people as, as you're mentioning this so many people are baking bread right and people are like trading their yeast starters and I'm like mm, yeah. I feel like we're all gonna just we're a step away from like putting on our bonnets and churning butter and making musket balls the Amish <laughs> are just laughing at us the so Amish are like you idiots yeah. why do you think we've been doing this the whole time exactly I know it's so great it's so great so are you using this time to prepare for when life gets back to normal, like uh, like lining up projects or, or kind of, um, no. I, <laughs> no. I mean, I've always kind of felt like my life is like shot out of a cannon and then sleeping. Like it, it feels like, I think I might be jumping the gun on one of your uh, later questions, but um, I think one of the hardest things about the industry once you are working is um, 
you know, you have no other side job in essence, you have no like consistent regular thing, you know? Um, and so when you're working, you're like, goosh. And then the drop is so sudden. Yeah. It's like you go from being so busy and literally surrounded by hundreds of people. And then any given day, like I'm, I've, I've chosen to like really love and embrace the people I work with as like family, right? Like the good ones. <laughs> you can't love it, really, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but I mean, most people, and you can, you can tolerate anyone for a few days. So right. for me, like it's a few days at a time for most jobs. So you really do love them for a few days. It's such a beautiful organic process that never happens again. Like the, the scenes, the numbers are so special. Like found, like, you know, like it, it, ha it ended before we could even say goodbye yeah. to it, right? So it's like, it's really important to cherish those, those work days. And I, and I do feel like, I say like my barometer of love gets filled whenever I work and I'm such an extrovert and I love doing what I do. Um, and all my family's in Texas. So like, obviously I've sacrificed a lot to, to do this. So I, I'm like, oh, okay, well then I should get the love from the thing I love, which yeah. makes sense. But then when the work is done, you're just depleted so quickly. So, so it, that's hard. And you, there's really no prep for it. I mean, maybe some people, I'm just not a big prep type person anyways. It's just not my process. Like get me in the room and I'll figure it out. But I do get anxiety before the job, before getting into the room. And I have thought like, oh wow. Like I was working on this Netflix show. Um, yeah, and I think it's untitled, but it's uh, Nick Jonas and Priyanka, his wife's like wedding dance show sort of thing. And um, we were like supposed to meet the families the next week and we're already deep into prep. And um, that's like pushed till September, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had like five different jobs and I was like, how am I gonna to balance all of this? So I th hopefully we go back to a world where it's really hard to schedule and we're all like quadruple booked because now yeah. the, we only have two months of creative time versus the eight months, you know? So um, it's gonna feel crazy, <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully it's gonna feel like you're being shot out of a cannon and then you just do the work one little step at a time and figure it out. So I don't know, I'm also, I don't know. I don't know if that was the right answer, but. No, that's the perfect <laughs> answer. Uh, and it actually, it, it did touch on a few things that I wanted to talk to you about, but I, I wanna dig a little bit deeper. So Will and I saw Found Obsessed. So good. Hey, oh, I'm so glad. So good. Yeah, oh. and I, th I think I mentioned to you when I first emailed you. I, you know, over half the cast are dear friends of mine, and oh, um, it was it was so. There were so many things about that show that were so good, but I'm I've also been stalking you. I'm a fan of yours from way back, oh. and one of the reasons why is because um, as a fellow storyteller and somebody that also comes from a dance background. I am so into the way you tell stories through your movement. And it's so clearly, it's story driven and humor driven. Um, mm -hmm. And I want, I want to talk a little bit about how you, how you developed the movement for found, because I also know, because I know these performers some, so well, some of them are dancers and some are not, but you made them yeah. look amazing. Yeah, the, the Fosse number was <gasps> amazing. So you just hate it when you want. And the whole rest of the interview is me just trying to be Zara. <laughs> it was so. so I never do because her voice. I know. Voice. Yeah. Well, like, it was my first time working with Maritz, which was such a dream. Like he, I say dream. I, the, there, there's a few adjectives that creatives need to rethink. It's dream, and then dancers say, "Oh my God, you're everything," and then we say genius. We say, mm -hmm. and then we use love a lot. Like we got it and I just did it. So <laughs> anyway, um, I could tell from our first like phone call interview sort of thing is that uh, I loved his like irreverence and how playful and fun he was and, and his process it seemed to be organic and, and wanting to be like story and story and comedy first. It wasn't going to be like a big dance, dance, dance for your life kind of show. And then, you know, I, I was at the audition, but um but, but, you know, he was like, do you want to be, I was like, I mean, I trust you. I, I'm not at all the acting calls and all the singing calls. And so I can make anyone work, you know, yeah. and especially since it is meant to be comedic and fun and story driven. And I, and I think I feel lucky working with non-dancers because they already have, or I just mean like not super, super professional. Right. Um, I mean, it's fun when you get to obviously, and you're like, okay, backflip. Okay. Eric, like I've worked with like the, so you think you can dance kids and they're just like, 
Oh, okay. Well, wow. Okay. Now my yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> Five turns into a fall. Okay. Great. No big deal. Yeah. But um, actors have such a um, unique way of moving that it makes your choreography look more interesting and special. Mm -hmm. Even if they are trying to do like a Fosse or something. I think what I like about Fosse is like he was, um, everyone always does this, which obviously like tells you it indicates that it's Fosse or whatever, but his, I think, movement uh, was um, catered to how he naturally moved, right? Mm -hmm. So like bow-legged or knock-kneed or whatever. And so that's the kind of way I approach with actors. It's like, I, I want to see them dance first. And even with artists, I like when I worked with Carly Rae Jepsen and Taboo, I did from the Black Eyed Peas, I, I do the same thing. It's like, I want to see them dance to the song. And then I know in two seconds what they're going to nail and what's going to be harder. Like some people love fast footwork. Some people love a good body roll. Some people you're like, okay, well, you're more acting driven. And also there's like, um, there's power and stillness, mm -hmm. which I think is a lot of times underestimated when choreographers want to show off of how good their choreography is. Right. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like I watch shows and it's like the choreographer is just like, look at all these moves. <laughs> how do they remember it? And like, I watched it and I'm like, and I try to like figure out where to watch. I'm like, I, 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 I didn't even get one eight count. Like, yeah, I, I you can't even metabolize it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's gotta be somewhat digestible to get the joke. Yep. Cool. But, uh, but for me, that process was, and I asked Maritza, I was like, I, I didn't, ha you know, cause it, it was like an LA production. So there wasn't like a lot of prep or there wasn't a skeleton crew. There wasn't all that typical stuff. And so I was like, I just kind of like finding it in the room with the people and I'm not going to like come in with like all these super, super eight counts. Like I'll, I'll sketch out like where I want it to go. And like my, my overall thoughts because the um, staging was so tricky because it was that it was like in the round. If for those that haven't heard your past, your past interviews with Jonah and Jordan were awesome, by the way. Oh, um, and then it was like the protruding stage sort of, but then they like all had to stay within the theater, the whole entire show. So there was no front, there was no, there was no wings, <laughs> there was no off. <laughs> Everybody was always on stage in some way or another. So that was what was a little bit tricky was to figure out how that worked and making sure everyone got the love, you know. Which as an audience member was so fun to watch. Those transitions, I'm a transition whore and yeah. I love watching transitions sometimes more than I love seeing actual choreography or whatever because it, there's, so, there's so much art to that. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that was really Maritz and I working together. Um, and for someone that I've never worked with, we were so symbiotic, it was awesome. And like, uh, one of my favorite moments <laughs> was like the car, the car scene, you know, where mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, yeah and, from, and, and, and I was just was like, I had like kind of staged this thing and he was like, hmm, I don't love it. And I was like, well, I don't hate it. And he was like, well, can we try my idea? Which was what we ended up doing of like, they're in a car. And I was like, okay. And then, and then he would always be like, and you'll make it more better. And I was like, <laughs> all right. And then we did it. And I was like, I hate it. He's like, I love it. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, which one do you want? He's like, let's do the car. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but um, but uh, he he was there the whole entire time. And, um, you know, it's, it's up to his vision ultimately of the transitions from song into scene. Yeah. And uh, I, that was his idea to have them just like, before you could realize the song was over, they would exit wherever they came. And, it, you know, it was really collaborative and really, really easy and fun. And he was so gentle and kind, like he never yelled, which is um, how I like to work as well. So that's good. Yeah, I feel like it really reflected in the show. And I feel like um, because you are so generous with people that are movers rather than, you know, trained dancers necessarily. I saw like Parv has some signature moves that I saw that yeah. I, because we used to do musical improv together for years. And I was like, oh, I, I know those moves. Like he, he was so Parv and Tom and Ryan, like everybody had their little shiny moment of like who they are. And it was, it was just so joyful. I just love it. You're so close. You can't fake it. I yeah, don't know. exactly. Dancer yeah. face a lot of times. Totally. What is that face? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so good. So, so when, um, oh, sorry. I was going to ask real fast. Uh, you were talking about 
casting and sitting behind uh, um, and, and what is it, when you're on the other side of the table and you're auditioning people, what are some things that really excite you about dancers and what things drive you crazy that are like red flags and that like you should try to avoid? Yeah, uh, so, so obviously like, like found was more like actors and then I would teach them to dance. So that wasn't like your typical dance audition. Um, and a lot of times I actually don't, I don't have auditions very much actually. Um, most of the time it's, uh, I'm given the actors in the scene and then it's like a very specific genre that we're kind of spoofing. And so I do casting calls from agents. Um, by calls, I mean submissions. Sure. Um, and I can kind of tell from their resume. And I really like to give people the opportunity that have been spending their career perfecting a style, the chance to shine in TV. You know what I mean? Like, um, for example, spoiler alert, there's a Reno 911 scene that I, it's back for Quibi. Uh -huh. And um, I choreographed a sexy scene. I'm not going to say too much, but it's like a little sexy scene. And I worked at Grinchmas. I was Martha May at Universal Studios. Oh my God. <laughs> Every time the train came out, I did that dance, you know? Yeah. And uh, my two twin brothers were Mark and Donald Romaine, who then went on to book like Britney Spears. And then one of them has been doing, Mark has been doing Magic Mike Live. And so like, he's been living in like shirtless sex land. Like he's like the poster boy of Magic Mike Live. And so I was like, oh, if he's available, he's perfect to be like sexy, beautiful man. It's like, yeah. duh, it's a no brainer. Um, so I really like to marinate and try to find the right people that are kind of been carving out their own niche in their dance life at that thing, right? Like if there's a Fosse number, like someone that did Fosse on tour, like Carl Warden, I'm sure you'll know. Yeah, of course. Um, and I had never worked with him before, but I was like, great, done. And it also cuts the like training. I don't have to train him how to dance like bossy. Right. I'm not that I'm taking, I don't want to take any of those moves. I want to give it the essence and like what makes it specific and cool versus like floppy. We yeah. know the people I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as auditions are concerned, I got to audition for um, this really great show that y'all should watch uh, called Dispatches from Elsewhere. It's on AMC. Ooh, it's okay. Jason Siegel's new show. Um, and uh, spoiler alert, there's a finale dance scene and um, I have, I don't know, I don't know in what capacity because it seems so far off of where the story is going, but um, that was fun having a New York audition. And so for, for me, uh, with this, I had to teach the lyrics really quickly. Um, and it was to a song they already knew, but the backup vocals and the timing were totally different. Um, and I hate making cuts like it's com comical how much I would just like okay uh, I'm just gonna film everyone and uh because <laughs> I think I think it's important to like give everyone a fair shot and to actually see them and sometimes in an audition for whatever reason you're distracted by whatever it might be that person pulling focus who's in the front line behind a really amazing dancer or right you just never know like your friend is there or I just you never know so I like to film everyone so I and then like I torture myself and stay up to like four in the morning like looking at everyone's tape um but there was one dancer who was nailing the dance so full out and I was like gonna book him and then I was like oh he's not singing he's not lip syncing any of the words and so acting for me gets me really excited like if if you're if you're clean and like obviously I I came from like a drill team, dance team background. So um, I love like specificity in movements. And that's, I think, where a lot of my comedy can come in too, especially with, with television. Um, so when it's a close up, you can see like, whatever, like the hand gesture will make it funny. Yeah. It'll be like a little surprise. Um, so if they're missing like the little subtle nuances of fingers or specificity, then that's not great. Um, so if they get that, they get the specificity and they're controlled and clean and, and they give themselves their, I say like, um, give yourself the agency to give your best performance, right? Like, don't wait for me to say, now, now be full out or now interpret it however your body feels good. Right. It's like, as a dancer, I remember taking like hip hop class when I first moved to LA and I was like trying so hard to get like the drill team brain of like, he said this and then this and then this, and then he performed it. He, you know, showed us the routine like five minutes before class was over. And I was like, he didn't do, he didn't teach it like that. I was like, he just danced however he wanted within the parameters of those yeah. moves. What? Oh, 
because <laughs> it wasn't 50 women trying to, you know, Texas drill team yeah. trying to be in unison. Um, so I think, I think, I think actors that dance well, listen to specific notes and give themselves the agency to, to dance within their own bodies that feel good. That makes sense. That's, that's great. No, that's, that's such good information. And I think, um, really unique and spot on to what, what makes a lot of your, um, choreography so magical. You, you asked, uh, I, sorry, you said, uh, something about, you know, for TV, um, the little hand movement and how that can be such a fun little surprise. What have you found to be the biggest difference, um, between choreographing for theater and choreographing for TV? Um, well, for television, you're not in control of what's edited, right? right? So you can have great choreography, but if they cut a, if, if you know it's a, the leads, the lead singing a solo and you've choreographed all this stage left and stage right choreography, that's not going to make the cut. Yeah. They're going to be in a tight <laughs> lead. So if you look back at Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, you'll notice that a lot of my stuff is like here, like mm -hmm. this is Rachel, and there's a lot of like <laughs> crossing. Yep. <laughs> Um, it's trying, uh, television's a lot of like trying to get into other people's head from having a 10 minute conversation with them. Like we'll have like these production meetings, but we'll touch on choreography or what actually tells me what they want for like less than 10 minutes. And then I, sh and then I'm gone and I make it up and then I show them and we may have a few minutes to change it but like, or might have to change it on the day, or if I'm lucky, like I've learned how to like, sh like if it's a really complicated thing, I'll like piece it out to try to get like approvals along the way. And then for theater, like I was saying with Moritz, like he's in the room with me. So I don't have to guess. It's so much more collaborative. And also what was also really fun was the actors were helping each other. Like there was like Tom was like dance captain and and I would like come to rehearsal and they were like rehearsing. And I was like, oh, I don't have to hold their hand, you know? <laughs> yeah, but right. The schedule, it's like actors are like kind of on a need to know basis, you know, like they're pulled mm -hmm. and like put in their trailer and like they actually are in the dark about sometimes the whole script, right? Um, um, it's interesting. It's just because there has to be like a chain of command and one voice for it all to work. And that's just the way that that process is and people say like respect the process which is, can be maddening but um in theater you're in the room so you like you hear all the conversations and the actors can speak up about props or things and and then they'll have time to adjust and change and grow and you have previews and but um on a, on a strictly choreography level like uh I guess like with theater like maybe the audience member can like choose their own adventure a little bit of like what to look at um, and you're kind of guiding their eye over like yeah. where and what's the important moment where in television, it's like, I don't know, I call it a little bit, it's like a little bit, I don't know, I use paint by numbers a lot. Um, like you try to get like the big scope of it, you make sure the big thing is working and then you'll go in and paint it in. Mm, and that's you'll interesting. like specify and add fur. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Section's red, this is blue and then, okay, now it's a bird. Okay, great. <laughs> And now it's a bird. There we go. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, the, the process is still the same, I guess. I, I mean, I've done a lot of theater like in, U, in LA, with, but like at UCB. So that process is a lot like television where it's like, I guess, I guess if someone wants to learn like what television is, it's do, do uh, improv theater because yeah. you'll, you'll teach it once and then it's live and then that's over. And then you're on to the next. Like that's kind of what television is. By the way, I recently saw pun off. Um, at UCB. Yeah, that was great too. I loved it. Matt is a friend of mine as well. And I just, so I mean, he's just so fantastic. And the show is so great. And your movement was fantastic. That was fun. That was, when, when he was like, I was like, I want to direct it. But I mean, knowing that, like, I mean, we basically did it together. I mean, that's the other thing too, was like in theater, I feel like choreographer, director, writer, they're all. Yeah. Intertwined. Creativity and music yeah. director too, obviously, which was also Matt, but yeah. So good. Thanks. That was a fun one. Wendy, um, what do you think about doing um, our lightning round segment now? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Are you ready for your lightning round, Kat? I'm scared. Okay. Don't be scared. 
Here we go. So we're going to ask you a bunch of questions. You're going to answer quickly. Don't overthink. Just like one or two word sentences, whatever. Ready? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> and what's your favorite musical of all time? Uh, End of the Woods. What's your favorite movie? All That Jazz. Ooh, me too. A performer who inspired you growing up? Sid Charisto. Um, who would you like to work with that you haven't yet? Mel Brooks. <gasps> Name a Barbie dream project you'd like to did work on. When did you freeze? No, I'm I good. Mel Brooks. Oh. Mel Brooks. Yeah. Okay, got it. Are you good? Can you see me now? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, what's a Barbie dream project that you'd like to work on? Uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend on Broadway, duh. Oh, duh. <laughs> okay. What was your first big gig? Freak Dance. What's that? The movie. Oh. It was a UCB uh, musical that we did every Friday at the theater for like two and a half years. The full title is Greek Dance, The Dirty Forbidden Boogaloo. <laughs> and then they made it into the movie. <laughs> Perfect. Of course they did. All right. What piece of advice would you But I guess I would say, sorry, other than that, I would say, and I have the mug, but Key and Peel. That was the oh, first like, yeah. on the map global game changer. So good. Game changer. Um, what would, what's a piece of advice that you would give your younger self? wear tighter clothes I don't know <laughs> I just like I would say like take more nudes but that's not me either I, um, I love both of those <laughs> <laughs> Great. I feel like as you get older as women you're like but when I was younger and thought I was fat I was hot oh my god I know <laughs> yes totally yes to all of that like I saw a picture of an older woman Sorry, I know this is a lightning round. Obviously, we know that. No, I, good. That was the no, end of it. Please go. Oh, good, good. There was a. It was like an Instagram picture, and at first, I was like judging it because it was like a girl like in the in the ocean, like covering and like just in her bathing suit bottoms, and then I saw that it was like an eighty year old, and that was her grandmother, and she like posted this picture of her like grandmother in her youth, being like vibrant, oh, and you know, yeah. to the wind. Yeah. Uh, in, in Mexico or wherever she was. And I'm like, why am I so straight edge? Why am I so straight laced? Live a little. Yeah. Love it. That's great. <laughs> that, um, I follow you on Instagram. And for That's those funny. of you watching, it's uh, <laughs> Kat M. Burns is your, yes. is your tag. Um, I, I love your Insta stories. Uh, I was watching one, you were dancing across the street with a friend and she dropped her iPhone and like my heart okay. broke for her. Yeah. <laughs> But how has social media changed the way you do business, like, or changed how you educate or communicate? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like I, I actually got on Instagram before everyone else did, but it was just, it was just a, so the way my mom could see what I was doing. Mm. Like she, <laughs> she, she always wants to like know where I'm at, what I'm doing. And I was like, mom, there's this new app and I can just post a picture and you can just see it automatically. I don't have to like. So I was like, you can see what I'm doing in essence. And I remember like my friends were like asking to follow me. And I was like, no, it's like supposed to be like, hey mom. And if, if people start following me, then I'm going to have to change how I post because yeah. it's meant to be just for my mom who I know won't judge me. Right. Um, so then obviously I changed it and I'm like now like filtered. I try not to have a filter, but it's also hard because it's like, especially in this time, like I, you know, you want to be considerate of people who are grieving, but also yeah. still stay happy. And, and like, how do you motivate without being real? And like, it's yeah. really hard to like figure out your online persona or whatever. Um, and I was working before it all came. I, I mean, I think now for choreographers, it's a way, I mean, some, I mean, people that haven't ever choreographed a second of television have like a million followers. Yeah. Right. Um, and I, I don't know if it's affected I don't think I get more jobs per se out of it at all. Mine's mostly just relationships I've built, which is great um, and word of mouth. Um, but I definitely look at dancers. So casting is, it's changed for me for casting because you'll get like an LA act, an actor's access or whatever the submission thing is. And you see a picture and you're like, I know that's not how that person looks. And also a lot of times I cast like real people like I, I rarely cast just like hot, <laughs> right? Like just hot girls, and I feel like all women always have in LA at least 
it's like called like body conscious and it's like the bra and the hoop earrings and the makeup and the stilettos and they're like fuck me now (laughs) I just like want to see what you look like I don't like who is this person underneath all of this makeup and all of this like pretend confidence Mm -hmm. you know like if that's you and you're ready to like perform burlesque which I have friends that are such phenomenal burlesque artists that I respect so wholeheartedly yeah. that should be their picture and, and I and I'm guilty of that too like I had those pictures because like I would book showgirl jobs where I would be dressed as a pink flamingo and hang from a swing 50 feet from the air that's just covered in flowers yeah my job was to just give them arms for an hour um cool Sweet egg. yeah and in Vegas you know yeah um so but Instagram's good in that I can like I go down like I hunt when I'm like because it's five people you gotta check their personality like are are they are they haters you can tell yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. um, are they super egotistical are they team players do they have a cool point of view um because you're bringing them into your safe circle that you've spent a lot a long time protecting and like I'm lucky that I have a good reputation because I'm a good person, you know, Mm -hmm. and like, that's important to me. And if I bring in all these divas that are being like an asshole to all my department friends, they'll be like, Catherine, your people are terrible. I didn't know. I don't know them. I just, I needed a roller skater. And (laughs) so it's good for me. (laughs) It's good for me to do my research. I mean, you can't always, you can't always guess, but, um, and then also too, like uh, sometimes it'll show like a technical skill set that you weren't able to see in the Euro combo because you you're right. quick, you know you don't have. I try to make my auditions really quick because whew, those dance calls are hard. Yeah. They're very hard. So that's how it's changed mostly for me. Is it's a good casting tool. Amazing, Catherine. This has been so amazing. Thank you so much for oh, all your time and just like. What an incredible conversation. You're just amazing. And I just really thank you so much for your time. This has been very incredible. I'm going to cry. Can our, our followers, um, we can follow you on Instagram before that, Cat M. Burns, but where else should we send people if they want to keep up with you? I mean, that's kind of it. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually debating um, of starting like a Patreon site or something. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of Patreon? Yeah. yeah. yeah um, what am I, some of my friends do it, and it seems like such a fun way to like, connect with people and like give them content that they want or, or yeah. things like this or like yeah I don't know that might be in the works but um and like something to say accountable because it's like week four and I'm like oh I, I gotta have somebody depending on me otherwise I won't show up for myself <laughs> you know what I mean well Sometimes. if you want to schedule a regular video call with us you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. I, I would love it. So. it was so nice talking to y'all I really appreciate so it so great Thank talking you so to much. you how have Thank you guys you. been surviving Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, a, a little bit similar to what you kind of introed with. It's it's been a roller coaster, a real roller coaster. Um, and you know, in addition to doing this, and for me being a teaching artist and being an actor, it's been weirdly busy because casting directors have nothing to do with their lives right now. So now oh. all of a sudden, everybody wants a self tape from me. It's been one of the most act. It's it's crazy and it's it's hard um you know and so I'm teaching and I'm doing that and we're doing this and um you know a few other projects that are kind of swirling that I'm trying to stay very active with and then also feeling all of this emotional sludge um Mm -hmm. and moving through that trying to go through it as it's happening as opposed to pushing down because there, you know, it's just gonna, it, it's just gonna rise back up, right? So I'm, I'm trying, I'm not very good at downtime. Usually I'm constantly feeling like I need to be doing something. And I feel like honoring what's happening moment to moment, there's really nothing more important right now. And so I'm, I'm really trying to be mindful and conscious of going, you know, it's okay to just mm-hmm. mourn. I mean, I kind of lost it with JJ and um, I wailed. I mean, I just had a day of, of, uncontrollable wailing and I'm still bursting into tears and um you know having having my moments but allowing that to just wash through me as it does and go well this is this is what's happening now mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and for me um my mom's in Boston and she insists on going to church every day and so I'm constantly fighting with her to stay the hell home oh mom <laughs> does, does, her her have, does her church have digital ter- church 
she's not technically savvy at all. <laughs> what did you say? She's, Will said, we were talking about her mo his mom earlier, which is like one of my favorite subjects. And he said, <laughs> her fingers are dead. <laughs> like they won't, like if I got her an iPhone one time and they won't register. I'm like, okay. just hit, just slide it, just slide. She's like, it's not working. And it won't, and like I'd take her finger and I, <laughs> dead fingers. Oh. Oh. Yeah. But I love her and I worry about her. Why don't you get her one of those Alexa videos? Mm. Like I said, she's not technically savvy. I no, wish. You just say, Alexa, call Will. That's and good then, yeah. You know, and then a video call. She doesn't have to touch it. Yeah. Okay. I'll try. I, I, know. I feel like that's something you could talk her through on the phone at least. <laughs> Can we put yeah. you on the phone with her? Would that be okay with you? <laughs> she doesn't like anyone to know her business. Like when I call her, like, because I want it to be a mutual, like, how are you? And then I want her to ask me how I am. But she's like, I'm fine. Why? You know? <laughs> she's clutching her pearls and her fur. <laughs> the world is upside down right now, and I'm concerned about my mom. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. That would be hard. So, but yeah, God love her. Is she <laughs> by yeah. herself? Um, she's close to the rest of my family. Like, I, my, she okay. was one of 10, and I have 70 niece, uh, cousins and, like, it's wow. And they're all Irish Catholic, Massachusetts, you know. Wow. I was, I'm I, well, Irish Catholic was, whatever. I don't go to mass anymore, but anyways. Um, but yeah, I was born in, my dad was born in Massachusetts. Okay. Holy, oh. actually. Holy, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're, all, we're all Texan. So wait, your whole family is in Boston and there's that many of them? Like the family <laughs> conversation must be like deafening. My, my nephews, Okay, this is so dumb. I'm sorry, I'm going off on this tangent, but my sister married this boy from high school and they were like the two biggest families in the school, uh, in the town. And then when they had kids, they the kids went to school and they would be like, are you my friend or are you my cousin? Because they were related to everyone. <laughs> like dating in that town is impossible because everyone is related. I've decided that Will and Will's sisters and the mother are like the sisters and the mother and the fighter. Did you see that movie? Uh, oh, wow. It's that vibe. Yeah. I, I've managed to get rid of my accent, but when I go home, no, I, I come back. Wait, I want to hear it. It's wicked bad. Everything is right here. Because I don't have a boy, like if I had like a Dorchester accent where everything was like, great. But no, I have like this nasally awful, like feminine Massachusetts accent that I hate. So I uh, just- Can you, can you- Say it was so nice to have you on. Like, how would you say like your outro to me in that accent? Oh, it was wicked fun having you on our show. <laughs> you're, you're wicked cool, and I love you, and you're awesome, and don't change <laughs> ever. I like well, it. Yeah, it's got a lot of charm. <laughs> <laughs> like Southern charm, like Texas. I could say thank you all so much. You automatically <laughs> seem like I'm fake, though. You are so <laughs> bless your heart. Bless your heart. No, bless your heart is you saying something mean about someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Bless your heart. Thank you for uh, so your time. You've been incredible. Fun. Thanks, guys. I really take care. It fun. Stay right. well. Oh my God, how great was that? <laughs> She's incredible, man. Okay, I so, loved it. And I, I should have said something, but could you see at the top of her shelf, she had her Emmy right up there. I wanted her to pan up and show it, but I was like, don't be a dork. Don't I know, me too, me too, me too. Yeah. It wasn't one Emmy, there were two Emmys up there. Amazing, uh. but yeah, what a, I mean, what a gift just to be able to, just to, because we're essentially we're strangers, for her to be so real and I know, and I really generous. appreciated that. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody enjoyed the show. I, really proud of it not a bad foray for our first video interview no and i i loved how much um good tangible information we got too i mean it was awesome chit chatting and getting to know her but she also shared so much good advice so um if anybody out there is listening and you are an aspiring dancer she gave some amazing tips too incredible so yeah no so thank you all for joining us on this adventure i think i might separate this into two episodes because there was so much and i don't want yeah but, good nuggets and, it, and it's great like i hope people enjoy this while they are um sheltering in place everybody please stay safe and sheltered and wash your hands and six feet apart and all that stuff and uh yeah and um and take care of yourself and take care of other people and um yeah, and uh, if you want to follow us, I'm on social media on Twitter and Instagram at Will Armstrong PR. And I am Wendy underscore Rosoff on Instagram and Wendy Rosoff everywhere else. And you can find us at Will and Wendy on Facebook 
Or you can go on the Broadway Podcasts Network, and we are Western Broadway on there, and check out all of the other amazing shows that they have on the network. Absolutely. And, of course, special thanks to our friends at Broadway World for always sharing our content. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Broadway World. Yay. And so, and thank you all for listening and for watching. Like, it's been really, really incredible. We (laughs) hope you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, until next time, if you're looking for us, you can find us just Just west west of of Broadway. Broadway. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.